everybody. Welcome into our weekly Big Orange kickoff show. Rick Russo in studio alongside my friend and colleague Tyler Ivins of WNML, the sports animal. You hear him every weekday afternoon along with his cohort in crime, Will West, mm -hmm. beginning at 3 o'clock every day. If you haven't listened to him, check them out. They're really good. I appreciate it. The, yeah. Rick, and this is a big one today against Florida. I'm glad you brought me in because, my man, there's not a team in the SEC I despise more than the Florida Gators, the, but I'm not biased. The Swamp anyway. Lizards? Yeah, those type of reptiles down there. <laughs> Look, if Tennessee is going to want to win in the SEC East, this is a big step in the right direction. Yeah, a absolutely. Uh, this game used to really mean a whole lot when it came to the SEC East race, but it's still fairly important, isn't it? Yeah, Florida has finished below 500 each of the last two years. And when Joe Milton was getting an NIL deal with a headphone company, he gave his entire teammates, in fact, those same headphones. And yeah. inside there was a note. And in that note it said, Accomplish our goals. Let's go win the SEC East. And, and, and honestly, it's about to go the way of the dodo bird, too, because, Rick, if you remember, <laughs> at the SEC meetings, they said that there's a chance that Florida and they, Tennessee don't play annually anymore when they bring in Oklahoma as well as Texas. So there's a good chance this might be the last time for some time that Tennessee heads to the swamp. All right, Tyler, which team has more pressure on it? A Tennessee squad that's favored by a touchdown or Billy Napier, who's looking to hold serve at home where his Gators haven't lost in two decades? Yeah, this to is the a, balls. This is an opportunity for Billy Napier to kind of shut up a lot of people who are already talking about buyouts for him 16 games into his tenure. The, the clear answer is Florida here because they're going to have troubles beating Florida State. State, LSU, and Georgia. If they don't get Tennessee today, there's a very real chance that only they finish 500, if not below 500. But Rick, we're talking about them probably finishing in the 6-7 win range. That's not going to cut it for a program that believes that it should be in Atlanta every year in the SEC East. And it really won't hurt my feelings if they don't. Uh, that makes two of us. <laughs> 7 o'clock kickoff on ESPN. Yeah. Tyler, some uh, comparisons now. Let's take a quick look. From a defensive standpoint, Gators giving up fewer first downs. They're a little better defending third downs against the Vols. Mm -hmm. Tennessee has struggled on third down conversion offensively. Tennessee, though, very impressive, as you see, tackling defenders behind the line of scrimmage. This is an opportunity for Tennessee to really win every facet of the game, and this is something that I have not seen in some time. Last year is probably the last time, but when you talk about the entire history of my 37 years of watching Tennessee, Florida, Florida usually is majority at position by position, but if you go through the checklist of what they're doing statistically and on the roster, maybe Florida has an edge in the secondary. Tennessee has never had a better opportunity to go to the swamp and win from quarterbacks, lot of scrimmage, defensively and head coach. Really, if this was a boxing tail of the tape, Rick, they check all the boxes. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. is a massive opportunity yeah. for them. All right, speaking of checking boxes and looking at stats, let's go back and see what Tennessee did last week against uh, Austin P. Yeah. The passing game in particular coming up short. Not th the big strike. Seems like they're vertically challenged right now. See if that can change against Florida. What hasn't been uh, bad, Tennessee's run game, nearly 300 yards against Virginia and better than 200 against the Governors. Nine yards per carry for Jalen Wright. Right. Seven yards per carry for Jabari Small. Dylan Sampson, after four touchdowns, Touchdowns only gets four carries, but here's the way I look at it. You've got Bell Cal Bow Committee. This game right. is going to be about not just Joe Milton, but Rick, the wide receivers have got to leave Catch their the DNA ball. in this game. Yeah, their yeah. fingerprints have to be all over this game. This is going to be an opportunity for Tennessee not only to kind of punch Florida early, but if they can take them out of the swamp and that noise of 90,000 fans, right. Rick, I, I don't have to really make a bigger point than that. The swamp's going to be massive. Take care of the football. All right, turn the page here. Let's look at uh, just a few more stats from last week. Penalties were costly uh, for Tennessee. They got to get rid of that going into tonight's game. Also, the Vols continue to struggle on third down, uh, but sacks. Yeah. Sacks has been terrific. 11 total in two games, best in the country. Yeah, right now they're one of the best in the country in that category. Aaron Beasley is number one in the country right now for tackles for loss. Yep. This Tennessee defense, Tim Banks has them right now fourth in the nation in overall defense. I remember talking to Tim this offseason and just you want to tell me more about your depth? And he had a big Cheshire cat smile and said, <laughs> we don't need to use the depth, but if we have to, we got a lot of guys much different than what we had in 2021.